Hi friends, welcome to Super Prof. Today we have to start second unit that is the BJT and FAT. Till now we have completed the first unit of the analog electronics and that is the diode circuits. I delivered a good number of problems there. I choose 95% problems from get examination only. I hope the concepts are pretty clear to you people. And uh, I would like to tell you one more thing friends. Please do problems at your home. Please do practice. You can prefer the last year get materials. So it will be very beneficial to you. Right? So let's start the second unit. Right? The second unit, if I'll talk about the course outline. So BJT and FET will cover in this unit. So let me come to the objective of the unit and that is to know about the BJT will know how BJT is going to function and uh, will know about the characteristics of the BJT and the biasing and later we'll see the FET and biasing of the FET. Friends, as I told you earlier, this is the analog circuit in which we'll deal only to the circuits part only. We'll not go inside the device part. Remember in the diode circuit in the very first unit, if we were talking about the diode, we have seen only circuit. Circuit means how this diode is working. When we'll connect in forward bias, what will happen? When we uh, connect in the reverse bias, what will happen? Like this. So, we have deal with the uh, circuit property or the device property. We are not going into the deep of the property. There we, in the first unit, we did not cover the deep inside of the PN junction or the diode. Okay, what is the working kind of thing? So here also I'll provide the brief introduction about the BJT, about the working of BJT specially. But we'll come out with the circuit parameters like current, beta DC, gain and so many parameters we we'll later will see in the unit. So we'll see the BJT, we'll take the circuit parts and we'll apply in the network and we'll solve the problems like this. This is all about the BJT. So let me start. The transistor. Friends, what is the transistor mean? Uh, see, this is the, I think you people in physics, in your 12th standard, you all have seen, I think, rheostat and something. Remember or not? Rheostat, variable resistance, you can change the value of resistance over here. Uh, there. Uh, here we have one jockey type of structure like this. This jockey is connected with some circuit kind of like this. Uh, this is the battery part over there. So when you will move the, this jockey part over this rheostat, what will happen? The length of the rheostat or the resistive wire will change. So the resistance of the wire will change, right? The resistance will change and we can take the different different value if we are having a meter over here and we are measuring the current in the circuit we'll get different different current at different value of resistance and it will be obvious because v equal to ri you are changing the current your v is fixed so definitely you'll be having changing current so this is the electrical part right in the old days we are using the electrical resistive uh, change uh, element that is the rheostat there we can change the uh, resistance values right now the same thing replaced in electronics by transistors are you getting in the electronics the same thing is replaced by transistor is the name C is the name given over here transistor resistance is coming over here right so transistor is also resistor, but what is the means by trans? We can change this resistance. We can control this resistance. So if you can control the resistance, you can control the voltage and current of the circuit. So uh, in one words, I can say the transistor is nothing but the controlling device. What we'll control later, we'll uh, know about this. So. Let's start the transistor part itself. Oh, wait a minute. So this is the transistor given over here. The other name of this is BJT, bipolar junction device or transistor, right? So 
Wait a minute, let me take pen over here. So, a transistor is basically a silicon and germanium crystal containing three, you know, separate regions. Basically, transistor is like you all people know, if you will take NPN transistor, what you are doing, you are adding two PN junction diodes in this way, right? In this way, you are adding two PN. So, in other words, I can say between two N layers, N type layers of semiconductor, the P is sandwiched in between them, right? So, how it's going to work in a transistor manner means the resistance will change for this circuit. Actually, friends, we are having four type of biasing over here. How to connect batteries for this NPN particular transistor I'm talking about. But before that, let me introduce these parts. The first part of the transistor we call the emitter. Is it okay? Emitter is highly doped. See, emitter in the NPN transistor, if I'll uh, talk about the NPN transistor, so this emitter region will be highly doped. This is the base region in between collector and emitter. This is the base region and this is the collector. Okay, the collector is given over here. What is the, you know, function of the emitter? The function of the emitter is to emit electrons or holes into the base region, but basically into the collector region. The base will be obstacle in between, right? As the name suggests, the emitter is to work as a emitter. It, it has to emit the electrons or holes into the circuit or into the device or into the collector part, right? What is the part, what is the function of collector? The function of the collector by the name given itself to collect the electrons or holes coming from the emitters, right? It has to collect. So, the doping of the collector is moderate. Why moderate? Because number of, a uh, couple of uh, uh, holes and electrons are coming from the emitter part. So, we have to restore or store them over here, collector. So, we'll be having a good area over here. So, the collector part of the BJT transistor is, you know, the area of the collector is high than emitter. What about the BJ, uh, sorry, base? This is the base region. In between collector and emitter, we call it the base region. This is the moderately doped. This is less doped, oh, sorry. See, in the uh, base region, the doping is very less and this is very thin part, okay? So, what is going to the system C, friends, if you will connect this device to some outer circuit, the current will come into the picture, right? Or into the circuit, the current will flow. Definitely, this current will pass this circuit and will come out also. But if here the current is coming IC, here the current is not IC, it will be, sorry, at the input stage, if your current is IE, at the output stage, you will get the IC current. But this is the fully controlled current. What I am saying is, how you are going to control it? What is the difference between simple resistance and this transistor? Here also, the current is uh, flowing into the resistive element due to this battery. And at the output, you are getting the same current. The same current is going into the element and the output stage, I am getting the same current. But here I'm not getting the same current. I can control this current by this reason. This is the base reason, right? And base is responsible to controlling the device or controlling the transistor. You know, the whole electronics base is how to control the systems or elements. If you are able to control the elements, then this is the part of electronics or this is the part of electronics intelligence, okay? So, so we should uh, be able to control the device. So similarly, the same thing is going to there in the BJP or BJT also. I'm sorry. In the BJT by junction uh, device, what I'm saying is the emitter will emit the holes or electrons into the circuit. The collector will collect it and due to base or with the help of base will, you know, control the upcoming of uh, the current from emitter, right? <clears throat> Come to the theory part. A transistor is basically a silicon or germanium crystal containing three separate regions. It can be either NPN or PNP. You can see over here. 
The medial region is called the base and the outer two regions are called emitter and collector. The outer layer although, uh, the outer layers although they are of same but their functions can't be changed. The function of the emitter to emit the electrons or holes into the circuit and the function of collector is to collect them, right? They have different physical and electrical properties. The physical properties I told you earlier that emitter is uh, moderate in size, this is large in size and this is thin, very thin, right? Well, we'll come to the, wait a minute. So in most transistor, emitter is heavily doped. And why emitter is heavily doped? Because emitter has to emit the electrons or holes into the circuit, right? Its job is to emit or inject electrons into the base. Okay. It will inject electrons into the base. The electrons will come to the collector region by passing this or crossing the base region. Right. So these bases are lightly doped and very thin. The base is very uh, thin and lightly doped. It passes most of the emitter injected electrons on on the collector. Okay, if 100 numbers of electrons are emitted by emitter, so it will go to the base region and like 98 and 90, 97 or 98 uh, electrons will come out. Okay. The doping level of the collector is intermediate between the heavy uh, doping of emitter and the light doping of the base. Why? I told you earlier because it has, it has to collect the electrons which are coming from the emitter region. So if the area of the collector will be less, so there will be heat up problem, heat problem, right? The collector is so named because it collects electrons from base. The collector is the largest of the three regions. It must dissipate more heat than the emitter. It must dissipate more heat than the emitter or base. I hope this point is clear to you. The transistor has two junctions. Here we are having two junction because we are adding two PN junctions, right? If you are consider this N, P, N, so this N and P will make one junction over here. I can say this emitter base, base junction. And in the second part, the P, N are connected. So collector and base, they are having their own junction over here. So this is junction one, junction two. This is the emitter base and this is the collector base. So the transistor has two junctions, one between emitter and the base and other between the base and the collector. Because of this, the transistor is similar to two diodes, one emitter diode and other is collector base diode. I hope this is clear to you. Okay, let's come to the BJT symbol. The symbol of NPN on the PNP transistor is shown in the figure. See, how is it? This is the symbol, right? This is the always emitter part. Is it okay? Sorry. This is the collector over here, given over here. Okay, let me check it. For me, this is the collector region, this is emitter region, and this is base region, right? So, why this figure is looking like this? See, what is going on? You are applying the current into the emitter. The current is coming to the collector, but you are controlling by base, right? This is kind of. So, for the BJT, if this arrow, you can encircle it. If this arrow is coming out, so this is NPN transistor. If this arrow is, you know, going inside, so I'll call it, call it PNP transistor, okay? So, we'll see about this. Into this circuit, suppose this is the collect, uh, base current IB and the resistance between collector and emitter is RCE. We have seen in the figure also. In the figure, this is E, base and collector, right? This is nothing but one kind of resistance or not. Control the resistance. Earlier I told you, this is reestored kind of thing. In the electronics way, you are controlling the resistance of it. Right. So, what is my point? The my, my point is, the resistance between emitter and the collector is RCE denoted like over here. So, in the outer circuit, if I'll talk about the current IC will flow. Right. This is kind of thing. So, 
who is the controlling part? The base is the controlling part. If IB will be zero, the circuit will be in cutoff. There will be nothing. Right? Why? Later we'll discuss about this. Come to the configurations. And before this, we have to check one more concept. Let me take this concept of the phrase page. See friends, we have seen the symbol of transistor, right? Here I am drawing it again. So this is the collector part. This is emitter part. And this is base part, okay? This is the symbol of transistor. And the actual transistor is like this. Three layer device. And two terminal, three terminal device, right? Like this. Okay, this is the emitter. This is base and this is collector. Now the point is, see, what you are going to do if you will study this, you are saying that or you will uh, get that in this circuit, you are having two types of diode or two diodes. See, this is the NP diode. So the diode is like this. Is it okay? This is another diode. It means you are connected two diodes in this way. This is the, this type of situation, right? And in between them, See, this is the two diodes you are connected and you are controlling this part. Right. So, from base to collector you are having one diode and this is, in this circuit the base is referenced. Right. So, from base to collector you have, for NPN if I'll talk about, the diode is like this. The base is P type, collector is N time. So, definitely the diode direction or uh, the symbol of the diode will be look like this only, right? And in between base and emitter also, you have one diode. Base emitter diode. Like this, the circuit is. Is it okay? So friends, based on this, we are having the three reasons of working of this transistor, right? And the voltage across this, I can call the VBC, can I? Voltage across this, I can call it VBE. Is it okay? So two diodes in between base and collector, one and one is in between base and emitter. Okay. So friends, as I told you, we have to see the operating reasons. Later we'll discuss in brief, but wait a minute, let me raise it. So friends, we are having two junctions, okay? One is emitter base junction. Emitter base junction. And another one is collector base junction. Collector and base junction. The base is the reference or the common part in between them. We'll consider the emitter base and collector base, okay? So this is the emitter base and this is the collector base. Now, if you biased Biasing means you have you have to apply the outer energy source to the circuit. If you will bias this circuit, emitter base junction is in forward bias. And the collector, or oh, let me start from reverse bias both. If both are in reverse bias, this reverse bias and this will be reverse bias, what will happen, you know? There will be no current in the circuit. If this is the transistor NPN. Now what you are going to do is emitter base junction you are making it negatively like this and to collector base junction again you are doing negative bias it's looking like this so the depletion in the this is the fully reverse bias circuit in the reverse bias circuit there will be i equal to zero we have seen in the diode circuit right depletion layer will in, enlarge in that theory and, and and all okay but uh, i'm not interested to uh, tell you this again what i'm saying is in the reverse bias the i the current in the circuit will be zero so this reason we call the cutoff reason the transistor is in cutoff so this is uh, working like a switch if you apply reverse bias on the both junctions you are getting zero output so this is like working like a switch. 
okay so suppose you are adding somewhere a transistor you are using the transistor and uh, due to this transistor you have the current flow in the circuit but but now you want to you know uh, suppose some device is working because of this current now you want to op this device so what you will do you will op the switch right so you will change the polarity or you will change the emitter base junction biasing and collector base biasing suddenly this will be off if you will do them reverse bias right so it's looking like or working like switch is it okay now what if if you will do it forward bias forward bias both in this case the transistor will work as saturation in the saturation region there will be a constant current in this case this is the saturation region in digital if i'll we'll talk about so this is the cutoff region and this is i'm sorry for this and this is saturation region kind of thing in saturation the value will be fixed and the cutoff region the value will be zero kind of thing is it okay i hope it's clear to you now if i'll come to the very important active region this is the very important because in this region only we are amplifying so transistor is also used to amplify the input okay so in the active region the ammeter and base should be forward bias and this should be in reverse bias then only i can you know use it like amplifier later we'll discuss about this and what if you are changing this like this will be in reverse bias and this will be in forward bias in this case this will be reverse active reverse active means all action will complete it now on the reverse way is it okay so this is the brief idea of the circuit of bjt later we'll discuss it now come to the next part and uh, this is the common base common collector and common ammeter configuration what is the common collector base and ammeter see friends here i have the ammeter here i have the base here i have the collector now we have to do we have to apply outer energy source to this right so suppose we are applying like this suppose we are applying like this in this way you are applying this so if you observe this carefully you will find that this base region is common in between them the base region is common for all to this all uh, this two energy sources v2 and v1 is it okay so this is the common base if you will draw it according so to the this uh, configuration i'll call the common base right you can see over here but what if you will common the collector let me show over here this is the collector part of the bjt now the collector will be common in between them right now you will apply the battery like this this is the base collector junction and this is the ammeter collector so here the collector is common right so this is vec this is vbc okay so this is the collector so i'll call it common collector similarly if you will common the emitter part of the bjt it will be common ammeter okay now we'll see details about common ammeter configuration the common ammeter configuration of bjt is shown in figure right so friends this is the npn transistor why because this arrow is coming out this is the pnp transistor because this arrow is coming in this part of the transistor i'll call the collector this part of the transistor i'll call ammeter and this part is base similarly the same thing is over here also this is b collector and ammeter now in this if you'll observe this is the common ammeter common ammeter how the common ammeter see the ammeter is directly grounded over here at the base you are applying the input wait a minute let me erase some part at the base you are applying some input okay at the collector part this is the collector part you are taking some output so if the base is input and collector is output so obviously the ammeter will be common or not or you can see this circuit in this way let me erase some part 
wait a minute. So to this circuit, see, you applied V in over here, V in, and this is the grounded. So this is the ground. You can join the ground. Here you are taking V naught, okay, V naught, and difference is ground. So this is the common emitter, right? Similarly, this one also the common emitter. We are showing two NPN and PNP transistors. So in common emitter configuration, the emitter is made common to the input and output. It is also referred to as grounded emitter configuration because we grounded the emitter over here. It is most commonly used configuration and this is very important. Okay. In this base current and output voltage are taken as independent parameters and input voltage and output currents as dependent parameters. Okay. So let me draw the common emitter symbol over here. This is the emitter part, base and collector, right? Collector, base and emitter part. Okay. Now VBE, the voltage between base and emitter, VBE, sorry, this is minus, is the function of IB. Definitely it will be function of IB and VCE. Here is the VCE. Okay. So this VBE is the function of VCE and IB. Sorry. Yeah, IB current in the base region. Later we'll know. And if we'll talk about the IC, this is the output current, right? Because you are taking output at the collector junction. So definitely it will be your output, okay? And this collector output current IC is the function of IB and VCE, okay? So output characteristics of CE is given over here, okay? Let me change the color. Then we'll discuss about it. Friends, this is the cutoff region given over here. In the cutoff region, the IB is 0. If you remember, earlier we discussed, if IB in the capacitor, sorry, the transistor is 0, then transistor will work in cutoff region. This will be fully cut off, right? So you can see over here. Okay. And this is the active region given over here. Right, so by this circuit, uh, I'll show you these characteristics. Before that, let me draw this circuit again, so it will be clear to understand. Right, and uh, I'm taking the symbol again. This is emitter, this is collector part, and this is base part. Okay, as I told you earlier, in between, sorry, this is the collector over here. Okay. This is the collector, okay? In the collector and emitter, I have resistance R, C, E, or you can take it E, C, C, no problem at all, right? This is the bidirectional and passive device. In the collector, in this, you have I, C. This is the outer C, E. If I'll take resistance over here, let's give the name R, B here, uh, V, B. Okay, fine. And this is grounded, common emitter. Here, VCC. And uh, now you are having two mesh over here. This is the input mesh and this is the output. Or in other words, I can say this is the input loop and this is the output loop. So, what this IB is going to do in the circuit? Or what transistor is going to do? As I told you earlier in the starting transistor is nothing but the variable resistance device. We are changing the resistance of transistor with the help of this current IB. Right? N, P, N. This is act, acting like resistor. But this resistor is the fully controlled because of this base reason. So because of this base current, we are going to control it. Right. So, if the IB is zero, so resistance between collector and emitter is infinity. The situation is like, this is IB and this is RC, RCE and here IC is given. If IB is zero, resistance between collector and emitter is infinity. Okay. So, can I say this? Resistance between collector and uh, 
emitter is going to control by IV. Okay, I'll tell you it. So IC in this case will be zero. But as you increasing the IB, suppose let's take it one micro, there will be some resistance. Let's take resistance value one K. You are having some current IC over here. So as you increasing this beta cur or uh, base current, your resistance is going to decrease 500 K in something. Not in this manner, but it going to decrease. What it means when you increase the IB, your current will decrease. Sorry, the resistance will decrease. When resistance will decrease, your current will increase. Is increase in VCE. Is it okay? This is the, uh, this is the understanding of this output characteristics. Now you will understand it. When IB is zero, the circuit, entire circuit in cutoff region. Cutoff region means there is a no current. IC is zero. But as you increase the IB, see, this is the way in which IB is going to increase. Here IB is something, here is IB is something. So here IB is greater than to this one. If this is IB2, this is IB1. So IB2 is greater than IB1. So in this vertically direction, IB is going to increase. When IB is increased, I told you that IC will also increase. Why? Because RC is going to reduce. If we are applying IB over here, IB over here you are going to apply, your IC will increase because your resistance is going to decrease. So when IB is equal to zero, that was the cutoff reason, okay? And at one time we'll see at particular value of IB, there will be zero resistance in between collector and emitter. That uh, condition I'll call the saturation. The condition will be saturation. In the saturation region, the resistance between collector and emitter is zero or near to zero. So in this graph, if you will see this saturation region, why I'm showing this saturation region? Because here the resistance value is very, very low. See, for the small increment of VCE, VCE current is increasing like anything. So in this case, current is increasing in infinite way, like very large value. So resistance is V by I. Is it okay? I is very large. Resistance will very low. Okay. So this is the saturation reason. And this is the active reason. In the active reason, the collector current is constant. So that's why in the common emitter or in any transistor the active reason is very important. Okay? Because saturation reason and cutoff reason, these two reasons are we are using for switching application only. Switching application only. You want to cut off some device from the circuit, you can apply the uh, cutoff uh, biasing of the transistor so at the output you'll be having zero current in your hand is it okay if you want to turn on any device you can apply the saturation reason in the bjt immediately you'll get the output so these two reasons are switching reasons but the active reason in which the collector current become constant is the reason in which we are amplifying We are amplifying over here. Okay. So the active reason is very important. So by this characteristics, we can easily come out with three things. And that is the transistor, transistor works in three reasons. And that is mainly cut off. The second one is saturation. And the third one is active reason. These are the three reason of operations. Okay. So let's come to the theory part of this output characteristics. The output characteristic is the curve between VCE and IC. Please remember. VCE the voltage between collector and emitter and collector current. 
because this is nothing but the voltage at output or output circuit right or the voltage we are controlling right for various value of ib for fixed value of ib and as shown in the figure see for the various value of ib we have shown here the output characteristics of the transistor now for fixed value of ib ic is not varying much and dependent on vc but slope are greater than v uh, than ce characteristics forget about this the output characteristics can again be divided into three parts this is the important part that is the active region saturation region and cutoff region right now we have to discuss some okay let me draw the circuit then we'll discuss some current part of the transistor this is the npn connected over here this is base okay in the npn transistor the current is outgoing okay emitter current ib is incoming and ic is also incoming so for any transistor the relation between these three currents is like ie is equal to ic plus ib who is responsible for current in the circuit obviously emitter so the producer current will be equal to the delivered current is it okay so ie will be equal to ic plus ib there is one large signal current gain also we call it the beta dc in the transistor and the beta dc is given by the ratio of ic by ib is defined as the transfer ratio or large signal ratio or current gain that is beta dc so this beta dc is introduced here beta is ic by ib is it okay to you people this is the output current this is the input base current so why this is gain this is the output this is the input so this beta will be gain or not and typical value of the beta is 49 to 99 this is the typical value of the beta or in general values right output by input similarly we are having another parameter that is alpha and alpha is ic divided by ie okay let me take it or the phrase page so it will be clear to you uh, i'm considering npn npn reason okay this is emitter part collector part and base part if you are considering n so you'll be having outer current from the emitter the current will come out from the emitter like this okay the current will enter into the base part and current will enter into the collector part so if you will see this the current ie equal to ib plus ic is it okay in the transistor this base current is very less this is the very less current right so in the transistor i is nearly equal to ic this is 1.1 this is the equation a let's take it and from this equation we are having the point i equal to nearly equal to ic okay because ib is very low or very less see if in general we are getting the ie and ic in milliamperes in milliamperes but if i'll talk about ib ib in general we are getting in microamperes so ib is very less current we can neglect it right in the previous slide we have seen the beta dc this is the current gain and dc gain so this current gain is given by ic by ie is it okay? sorry ib this is ib so this is micro current this is milli current beta dc is very high okay similarly i'm getting alpha and alpha is given by ic by ie so ic is you know slightly less than ie so alpha will be less than 1 always 
Is it okay? This is also type of current gain, but here we are not considering I as the input. As the input parameter, we are considering I B. Or if you want to amplify through resistor uh, transistor, you have to choose the base parameter as the input parameter. Okay? Or you have to amplify the I B. Is it okay? So uh, there is another formula, and that is I E equal to 1 plus beta of IB. IE will be 1 plus beta times of IB and uh, by this formula IC will be beta times of IB. Is it okay to you people? This is, uh, let's give it 2 and let's give it 3. IE will be 1 plus beta times of IB and IC will be beta IB. So, if you'll be having relation between alpha and beta, so you need IC and IE just to divide these two. So, IC by IE, when you will divide these things, you are getting alpha and alpha is beta divided by beta plus 1. So, this is the relation between alpha and beta. Is it okay? So, these are some parameters or some equations related to the transistor. Now, the formula, this one is very important, I e is nearly equal to I c. And these two formulas or equations are very important, okay? You have to remember this. So, in the last slide, we discussed about reasons of operation. Active reason, cutoff region, alright? And saturation region. The transistor operates in these three regions only and in which this active is very famous or useful because it is used in amplification. Amplification and these two are used for switching. Switching, okay. okay. So friends, uh, these three things are very important. We have to select the transistor or we have to know about the transistor that the transistor in working at particular time in which region. Okay. While solving the questions or problems, basically from gate problems, we are getting this concept frequently. And the concept is what will be the output or input parameters and something, something. I'll introduce with some problem for this same reason. But our heading is to find out to find out reason of operation okay reason of operation i'm talking about see friends what is the problem and why we have to check this i'll tell you let me consider one problem over here the problem is given This is grounded. Here I have hundred K like this and this is two point seven. Okay. And this is one K and five volt. Now the question is find out the region of operation. In which region this transistor is working? What is the region of on of operation? We will check three points whether it's working in active region whether it's working in saturation region or in cutoff region. One by one we'll check all this three. If we could find this, any of this we can say, uh, the condition of any of this we can say the transistor is working in particular region. The condition for saturation is what? The condition for saturation is RCE will be zero or VCE will be zero or not. If you remember that particular symbol like this over here I have RCE across here also I have VCE kind of in the saturation region the RCE was uh, very low so in this case VCE obviously will be low so this is the condition for saturation what about cutoff for the cutoff the standard 
कंडीशन इज आई बी शुड बी जीरो वट अबाउट एक्टिव द एक्टिव कंडीशन आई इंट्रोड्यूस ओवर हियर सी दे आर सेंग फाइंड आउट द एरिजन ऑफ ऑपरेशन दो दिस सिस्टम इज नॉट वर्किंग इन द कट ऑफ बिकॉज I have definitely IB because you applied some energy source over here, and between base and ammeter, I have VBE, and VBE is the always point seven for transistor. Okay, base ammeter reason. This is the you can understand like barrier potential kind of thing in the diode. We have seen barrier potential or not for the silicon diode. We are having point seven. And point three for the germanium diode. This is the minimum voltage required to operate the diode. Similarly, this is the minimum voltage required to operate transistor given by VBE point seven volt. Is it okay to you? So definitely, this is not in cutoff region. Definitely, this is not in cutoff region. So how we'll check now the saturation and active? We are having standard procedure for that. Just follow me. You'll get the idea. Okay, so first I'll tell you what is the procedure. Then we'll apply the procedure into this given problem. Okay, so the procedure is the very first point. Let me change the. Okay, so the steps are steps to find out the region of operation. The first step is find IC saturation. Find IC saturation. first this is your first step but is ic saturation the saturation see remember one thing the saturation current is the highest current in the transistor okay the saturation is the maximum current i can say this is the max current in any transistor saturation current ic saturation in the saturation uh, we have discussed the vce should be zero v c e where is the c this is c this is e in between this there should be one short circuit because the voltage is zero if this is short circuit can you find out this ic yes you can find out so now suppose you have find out the ic saturation now in the sec second reason you have to find ic active find ic active IC active is totally depend on IB or not. Tell me, who is controlling IC? IB is controlling IC. So the active IC or the collector active current is we have seen in the formula. The IC is beta IB. Is it okay or not? So by this procedure to ah uh, sorry, uh, in the situation yeah. In the saturation, by applying VC equal to zero, you'll be find IC. Now, secondly, you have to find the I active. Your I active will be IC is nothing but beta IB. Now you need input parameter that is IB. So you will apply the KVL over the input. You will multiply with beta for this circuit. Beta is given hundred. You will multiply that IB with beta. You will get IC. You are getting some IC over here. This is IC active. You are getting something. Now in the third stage, you will check if IC active. The condition third is if you find that IC active is something is greater than IC saturation. IC saturation. Suppose the condition is IC active is greater than IC saturation. So this is not possible. Why not possible? Because the saturation current is the max current in any transistor. So this condition is faulty condition. So what it indicates? It indicates that your BJT is working in saturation region. Saturation region. Your IC active is exceeding IC saturation. I max saturation. It means definitely. the upper point of your bjt is saturation only now what if ic active ic active current is lower than ic saturation lower than saturation saturation current is something that is the max current now your active current is less than the max current 
what it means it means that yes your transistor is working in active reason right when ic will exit from the saturation it means it's a default no current can exit the ic saturation so if this type of condition will come the circuit will work in the saturation reason itself is it okay to you now we'll check this circuit okay i'll draw it again for you and we'll check it the condition or the question is given the 5 volt vcc here 1k this is 1k okay the emitter region is grounded over here in the base region the 100k ohm 100k resistor connected with 2.7 volt battery and this is 100 given over here this is beta i have to assume this voltage drop vbe always for any transistor 0.7 volt okay according to my procedure first i have to find out ic saturation how to find out ic saturation by doing vce0 vce0 you have to do vce0 means you have to short this two terminals collector and emitter now you have this outer circuit can you find out this current for me yes this ic will be this ic saturation this will be ic saturation this will be no more ic active or any other current this will be ic saturation ic saturation will be 5 minus is there any other voltage yes 0 volt divide by resistance that is 1k so this is 5 milliampere your ic saturation you have uh, found for this circuit and that is 5 milliampere now this is step one and the step one is over now you'll come to the step two in the step two you have to apply something in the input and have to find out ic active your ic saturation part is over now you will find ic active is it okay now you have to find ic active and ic active is given by beta ib IC active is given by beta IB. So you need to find out IB here. Then you will multiply that IB with beta. You will get IC. So in this circuit, can we apply KVL? Yes, I can apply. 2.7 minus 100K IB plus minus 0.7. Minus 0.7 equal to 0. So, 100K of IB is equal to 2, 2.7 minus 0.7, it's 2. So, your IB is 2 divided by 100K. Is it okay? So, this is 20 micro, if I am right. Yes, this is 20 micro. So, your base current is 20 micro. Can you find out? Your uh, IC active, yes, you can find out. IC active will be 100 times of base current. So, it will be 2 milliampere. Now, in the third condition, you have to check. In this case, IC saturation is greater than IC active. Okay, we don't have any problem. IC saturation is the max current. It can be maximum than IC active, no problem at all. And for this circuit, the 5 milliampere is greater than uh, IC. The IC is, tell me, 2 milliampere. So your circuit is working in active region. Your circuit is working in the active region. So this is the procedure how to find out the three reasons. Okay. So this is all about today's class. This was little bit boring because this is theory part. From the next video on watch, we'll deal with the problems only. I'll illustrate whatever I want to deliver in the form of problems only. Okay, friends? So, we'll meet in the next. Till then, take care and bye.